So I'm standing here at another big snag that we've had come down just in the past couple of days. You can see really extensive root base and ball that's been pulled up. Part of the trunk itself snapped there, going all the way over. And you can actually see now how well it comes through in the video, but this root right here is still actively wet from where it was broken and pulling up water from this pool here. As you can see as I go around, this is a really good sized tree, particularly for this forest. You know, it's probably in the top 10% in terms of the overall size and age. I'd probably put it somewhere in the 70, 80 years old, I would guess. Could be a little bit older. And as you can see, I mean, this is a good sized tree. I can just barely wrap my round, arm around about halfway here on this trunk, just you know, a few feet up. And you can actually see here, you know, we've got still really bright white wood from where it snapped. As I said, we haven't had, last rain was about March 2nd or so here. It's uh, going on now the 14th. So if we'd had fresh rain, some of this dirt and other debris should have washed off by now, but it hasn't. You can even see here the roots. You can see where the soil on the end is dry, but as you start to go up a little bit higher, this is all still very damp. So you can actually see you know, the area where it's been drying out since it came up. And just to give you a sense, you know, we're, this is part of the Great Black Swamps in northern Ohio, so you've got a really high water table here. And so this immediately, as soon as that root bundle came up, water came up and filled that whole area. But I was out here a week ago, and this tree wasn't down, and this tree wasn't down. So this one has actually split off. We had two trees growing here, and now where that second tree had attached, it's literally just ripped itself apart in this facing area here. You can see a little bit of white fungi that was growing in between. And this tree, this one, and they took down, it looks like at least two, maybe three other trees in the process. You can see it actually snapped the top of this tree off right there um, when it came down. And like I said, when I was out here pretty recently, in a week or so, last Sunday, this tree was down here. This was a new tree fall. You still see kind of the fresh white inside exposed there. But the bigger one behind it here, going off kind of this way here, that one had already been down. So this was a, within the last month or two had fallen. And then just in the last week or so, this one and this one. And we had some good wind the last couple of days, which probably contributed to that. And I think also the fact, as some of these bigger trees have been coming down, as you can see, canopy is getting more and more open, more exposed. It's easier for the wind to come through and take out some of these really big trees. So a really, a really interesting example of you know, this process of forest succession taking place in real time as these new openings increasingly um, get created here. You have more and more sunlight coming into the forest. It's going to dry some of these areas out a little bit more and eventually over a longer period of time you're going to start to see some possible you know, small cluster micro habitat changes in these areas as well. More sunlight, drier, more wind, these different exposures, more plants are more likely to come in. So a really fascinating you know, way to see and watch how this forest is evolving in a real-time process. Very neat. And for those of you that have been following, the fox, or sorry, the coyote dens, what I thought was perhaps a fox originally, is just about 50 feet back. Um, this way here towards a big tree that you can't clearly see. So this is all kind of prime territory for our coyote friends um, over the their arranging habitat here. So you have another really interesting phenomenon here. You see this tree snapped off there. This tree is blown over here. This tree snapped off from up there. That tree's bent over. This tree is pushed over. This tree here is pushed over, bent, a couple others that are knocked down there. But if you'll notice, there's actually nothing here that landed on any of these trees to push them over. There's no big fallen branches or anything that would indicate, you know, for example, snapping off this because it got hit by another tree falling over, which suggests that you had some kind of a, a tiny like microburst come down and hit this area 
And this wouldn't be the first time we've seen this, but that would help explain why you get these really interesting dynamics like these trees being knocked over here, but no other comparable uh, large tree damage like we saw in the other area. So another really interesting example of how you know these increasingly open areas can produce all of these different really fascinating storm dynamics. And I, I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's all of these I'm sure if they're grackles or they are these blackbirds flying around over here. I saw, I've just seen two different hawks circling over this area in the last couple minutes. And you can tell they're definitely reacting to those hawks. I don't see them immediately, but the birds tell me they're somewhere nearby. They're circling or um, up in a tree. But earlier they flew right up this, we're circling around this area. And I suspect they're likely moving somewhere over um, in this direction, just based on the way the birds are all f flying currently. But so anyway, I just thought this is another really interesting example of sort of the dynamics going on in the woods that if you don't spend enough time here and you're not paying attention, you would really never notice. You would just, it would be a fallen tree and you would never think twice about it. But there's actually something more interesting going on here if we dig just a little bit deeper under the surface.